Hi, I'm Nathan Zampronio, one of your Hawkesbury City Councillors. Our town centres here in the Hawkesbury are long overdue for a refresh. All you need to do is walk through Windsor Mall here and see that the pavers are cracked and that the stonework hasn't been maintained or cleaned and that our famous gas lanterns have not operated for years through neglect. Our council became a member of the Western Sydney City Deal in 2018. An umbrella group of eight councils were promised funding for a variety of capital projects and one of them was the Western Parkland City Livability Program which allocated 18 and three quarter million dollars to Hawkesbury City Council to be focused on the revitalisation of Windsor, South Windsor and Richmond Town Centres. Our own council kicked in three and three quarter million dollars towards that program. Urban town planning architects were engaged to create a vision for what it might look like here. Their early efforts to show what we might want Windsor to look like were hilariously off the charts. With the mall sporting a fountain, blue glazed paving, mature trees which just aren't there, and a weird giant public sculpture of a hand stuck in a pose, which my teenage son informs me permits the artist to punch anybody who sees it uh, in the arm because they looked at it. In fact, once the results of community consultation were compiled from 2,149 respondents, it turns out that what we really care for is much more sensible. Care for our local heritage, cleanliness of our public spaces, attractive street plantings and street furniture, appropriate seating and the cultivation of outdoor cafe culture, and access to parking. The plan that Council has developed isn't without its flaws. I was happy to vote for a notice of motion brought recently by my colleague, Councillor Shane Jurek, that explicitly sought to protect the rotunda here in the mall and the gas lanterns. I thought I'd visit Windsor business owner Darren Peed for a chat. He's really passionate about the Hawkesbury and about Windsor particularly. G'day Darren. Hi Nathan, welcome. It's a pleasure to see you. It's nice to see you. Yeah, and it's lovely to see this beautiful upper room that you've created here in the store, which is where people can kind of retreat and enjoy their, Absolutely, yeah. enjoy their desserts. Darren, g'day. Hi Nathan. Local identity, local business owner obviously passionate about the Hawkesbury and about Windsor particularly. What's the connection? What led you to Windsor? Okay, well, many years ago, about 15 years ago, I was looking for a location to have a retail shop. Mm -hmm. So I, I live in the Hillshire myself. I don't actually live in the Hawkesbury, but um, looking around, I found, I, I realised that the Hawkesbury, and Windsor in particular, was an absolutely ideal place to have a retail business um, for many reasons. The main reasons being the proximity to Sydney, the historic heritage and feel of the Windsor Town, Windsor Mall in particular, and um, the amount of people that I know that visit Windsor on a regular basis. And you now have a stake in more than one business, so which ones do you have an interest in? Okay, well, my first business in Windsor was an antique shop, mm -hmm. which evolved into Guy Stuff. So the antique shop turned into the Guy Stuff building, and the Guy Stuff store. Several years after that, we had... Um, expanded into lollies and stuff and more recently 12 months ago we decided to open the delicious dessert store here in the Windsor Mall. Wow okay then well, well good on you. Now I understand that you're a traveling man and that in your travels you have seen examples of historic town centres treated very respectfully and in a sense that's inspired you with ideas that we could or should be implementing here in Windsor. Talk to me about that. Yep, definitely. Look, one of my passions, other than retailing, is travelling. So I've travelled a lot around the world, and a lot of my ideas for my businesses come from my travelling. Like my lollies and stuff idea came a lot of ideas from the US. So while I was looking for business ideas, I also found ideas that would be ideal for Windsor in historic towns in the UK and in historic towns in the US. Um, the most recent one I visited was in um, South Carolina, a town of... Uh, um, Charleston, South Carolina, what they're known for is gas lamps. So I drove quite a long way to get to Charleston in South Carolina to check out the gas lamps. The entire town does not have a regular looking light in the entire CBD. Every, lamp, every light in the town is a gas lamp, similar to the ones you may be able to see behind me. They're not all 
running on gas. A lot of them are running on electricity, but they look like gas lamps. Mm -hmm. But probably half of the lamps in that town are actually running on gas. Like so I, I, I never knew this, and this is one of the things that you learn when you start digging, is that the number of gas lanterns that we have here in Windsor is, is almost unprecedented. It is. As far as, far as I know, there's no, there's no town in, in Australia that has more gas lamps than, than we have here in Windsor. That's right. And, and, and these are historic in the sense that when this mall was put in in the 1980s, that was an addition that they made at that time, yep. but based on something even more historic that we might be able to have a look at later. So my last question is, this money that's been allocated for the revitalisation of our town centres. And it's not just here in Windsor, it's Richmond and South Windsor and elsewhere. But this plan uh, has been the result of uh, a lot of community consultation. The kinds of things that people point out seem sensible. It's, it's better amenity, uh, respect for our heritage, um, development of a cafe culture and outdoor uh, dining and so forth. What's good and what's not so good about the plan that's before Council now? Okay, well, there's, thankfully, there's more good than bad. Okay, the good things is that it's actually going to happen. Mm -hmm. right? So Windsor Mall was built in 1984. It's barely had a cent spent on it since 1984. Mm -hmm. So it, Windsor Mall is in desperate need of a cl clean-up. It's, it's not in need of a destruction. Mm -hmm. It's just in need of a clean-up, a, re, a revitalisation, a refurbishment. So the lamps that we have just need to be refurbished. The furniture that we have needs mm -hmm. to be refurbished. The pavers, we're sitting here on top of some sandstone pavers. These sandstone pavers are fantastic pavers. They don't need to be ripped out. They just need to be cleaned and some of them need to be repaired. So the current design offers no guarantee that this beautiful sandstone will be preserved. And in fact, one of the shortcomings that you were able to point out was that there were other things that the community seems to value that were at risk, that, you know, that the gas lanterns would, would stay in, in the number that, that there's currently here now, uh, that the rotunda would be preserved. And, and, and suddenly there was this huge upsurge of support to preserve the rotunda. Uh, I would add the sandstone paving to that. And I agree, it's in an absolutely sorry condition. And... Uh, I wouldn't want to see it replaced simply because the council had run down their condition and said that it was beyond salvaging. Because, yeah, absolutely. Because there's a section uh, of paving where people have now cleaned that up and it looks absolutely beautiful. All it needs is a gurney from time to time. That's right. Yeah. So what would you like to see happen with the plan? Well, what I would like to see happen with the plan is that the historic features that Windsor has now are uh, all kept in place and they are refurbished rather than replaced. So let's let's make a list. That would be the gas lanterns, gas lanterns. the beautiful sandstone, the wrought iron ends to all of the street furniture. Yep. One of the things that caused us both concern is that when the conceptual designs came out, it looked like they were taking a lot of heritage away and replacing it with fairly bland Westfield style, style public furniture yep. with, with, with hard stainless steel and, and it wasn't appropriate for a heritage precinct, Absolutely. and that's Absolutely. something that your travels yep. have certainly told you uh, is worth worth preserving. Yep. Is there anything else in that list? Yep. The um, the the rest of the pavers in the Windsor Mall, mm -hmm. like the whole Windsor Mall is paved. The the there's, there's some pavers that are damaged. Yes. Some pavers that are uneven. Mm -hmm. They need to be repaired, not replaced. The 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 figures that I've seen, there's a ten million dollar budget to replace paving in the Windsor Mall and in other parts of George Street. Mm -hmm. The paving that we have is perfectly fine. It's, it's stood the test of time, just needs to be repaired. And, and you're saying it's unlikely that if the paving were all ripped up, that what it, would going, what it was going to be replaced with was likely to be any better. And the thing is, you and I could walk through the mall and we can see examples of lifted pavers that are a trip hazard yep. or cracked, but it's not all of the pavers. It's not. And if there's $10 million allocated to replace all of these pavers, if we simply repaired what needed to be repaired, that would give us millions of dollars that we could put towards things that would yep. better enhance and preserve yep. the heritage Absolutely. in a way that would represent international best practice. Absolutely. And well, I, think, I think that's an excellent idea. Well, that could be $9 million. Mm -hmm. There could be $9 million mm -hmm. available to enhance Windsor. The gas lamps we have here now, there's 20 odd in the mall. There's no reason why this gas lamp walk can't go from the Thompson Square down that way, mm -hmm. 1.5 kilometres all the way down to the railway station. Is it too late 
considering the degree of development that this plan has reached through the design phase and the community consultation to change tack like this? I'm a business owner, Nathan. If I can make a decision and I make it happen. Mm -hmm. I know Council has systems and procedures, voting, everything that has to take place and it's not just a one-man band. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe it's too late. Because Windsor is incredibly historic. It's the third oldest settlement in Australia. Yep. And when Governor Macquarie uh, gazetted and, and set the boundaries of the five Macquarie towns, even he reflected at the time that Windsor was already a thriving town of over 100 structures and yep. 150 inhabitants. Um, and that footprint of the original town, and I'm a history teacher by training, so I, I, I pay attention to stuff like this, is really something that we could be crowing about and using as an economic and tourist draw and looking after our heritage. That's right. Well, these towns that I've visited in the, U the UK and the towns that I've visited in the United States promote themselves as gaslight capitals of the US and the UK. Mm -hmm. Millions of tourists go to those towns to see the gas lamps. Mm. We have gas lamps equivalent to or even better than some of the ones I've seen in these towns. You know, I, I know that sometimes people are, are, are down on the area and I, I simply won't hear that because we've got so much wonderful heritage and architecture. And in fact, behind us here is the beautiful Loader House. And there are so many of those original structures, yep. which, we're, which we're lucky enough to have, even despite the depredations of fires and floods over the years. And it could really be a showcase. Yep, and it absolutely. could really be the jewel in the Hawkesbury, yep. if only we had more vision. Darren, it's great to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time. No, thank you, Nathan. I appreciate you taking the interest in what we can, can make Windsor become.